Hey there, ACH100. We are back to do our roof framing assignment. Let me get a little thing out of the way there. Okay, so what I have done here is I've copied my wall section that had the typical window condition in it three times into a new model. And then this little thing actually came from um, the 3D warehouse and it is called a Simpson Hurricane Tie. And I believe this is uh, H2.5A model. Um, but anyway, we'll be using that um, on all of our roof assemblies. So I just put one there. Uh, you can go there and get it. So what I would like to do with the first uh, roof is the flat roof uh, model that was shown in the video. Uh, so in uh, the video, Steve Basic says, uh, that their roof assembly is uh, made up of nine and a half inch LVLs. Well, we have some LVLs down here. They're a little too big, but we're going to go down here and grab them and modify them. So let's grab that by the end with the move tool and hit control to make the copy. And then we'll come up here and go to this outside edge. And it's a two foot overhang. So we'll head in that direction and type two feet. And now let's click into this group and pick the top flange. Uh, let's see, let's use our measure tool first. Let's see, that was nine and a half, right? So 9.5. Now we know where to move it down to. Grab it by the end and make sure we're on the blue axis. Going up and down, hit shift to lock yourself into that blue axis and move it down to the line. There you go. All right, now let's click on the web and push pull and put it down where it belongs. And then you can exit out of that group. Now we have the nine and a half inch um, wood I joist. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we are going to put some blocking in between these because we're going to need it. Uh, when your material is solid all the way down, you don't need this blocking. Uh, but when it isn't, you do need to put some extra blocking in. So we will go right here inside, make a little rectangle, and we will stretch it out to the face of our flanges. And we'll stretch it out, uh, let's say, three inches into the room. And make sure it's aligned here and three inches out. And we'll triple click, right click, and make it a group. And then we will paint it uh, with our two by color. And then we need it on both sides. So we'll take that one and get our move tool and grab it right here on this corner. Head in the direction we want to go and hit control and it'll make a copy. And then if we swing around here, we can pop it to that side. And now we have our blocking on both sides. Now I'm going to pick the wood eye joist and the blocking. And I'm going to make that a group so that it all moves together. Now I am going to add this hurricane tie. So we'll move it over here. Zoom in. Oops. Grab it by the edge and head in this direction. And we'll pop it against the edge of that. Pick this and this. We'll just move all this over onto the wall a little bit so we can see what it is we're trying to achieve. Come on, move on over. There we go. Okay, so what the hurricane tie does is it attaches your roof framing to your wall framing so that when a wind comes along and tries to pick this roof up off of the wall, this ties it back down. So now that we have that, we are going to grab this and this and our move tool and then we'll grab the center line of this and head in the direction we want to go and hit control 
so we get a copy and then the, these are at 24 inches on center hit 24 and enter and that gets your first one and then let's make all five times so you type in 5x on the command line and hit enter and you've got all your copies we'll get rid of those guides later but now you have all of your structure all of your hangers I mean all of your hurricane ties excuse me and your blocking so I'm going to go ahead and pick all of these I'm just going to shift all of these over onto the wall just a little bit more ah, I forgot a hurricane tie there we'll go in and grab him And pop him to the wall. Okay. Now that we get them all, yes, we did. Okay. In between the um, wood eye joist, there is blocking as well, so that birds don't come in here and such. Uh, so we are going to make. We'll come over here onto this face and zoom in. Let's go to right this corner. And we'll head up and in this direction and go 1.5 comma 9.5 and we have our blocking in between our joists and we'll pull one here I'm going to triple click right click and make this one a group and paint it now, since this is a different one than the other spacing, I'm going to grab this one and hit move and control so that we have a copy and come over here. So I'm going to triple click into the group, push pull, and move this over. All right, now that we have that one, we can pick it and hit move, head in the direction we want to go, and hit control. And then hit 16. Oops. Let's try that one more time. We'll grab this, head in the direction we want to go, hit control, and then hit this face right there. Now, what in the world is going on here? Hmm. Okay, I've messed myself up somehow. Let's try this again. I will not edit out the bloopers this time. Let's see what's going on. These look all right, but these don't, do they? All right, let's delete these. Let's measure these to make sure they're correct. See, even I screw up. It's okay. All right, go measure from here to here. And those are two feet. Okay. So let's grab this one uh, up to here. Head in the direction we want to go. Hit Control and hit 24 and two okay now there we go that looks better okay so let's try this again we will do our blocking again so we'll go here and then we'll type in 1.5 comma 9.5 and then we'll push pull it out to the edge triple click right click make it a group always 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 guys we don't like sticky geometry we'll paint it and then we'll use our move tool grab it here head in the direction we want to go and hit control and that makes our copy and then we'll pop it to that flange and then we'll triple click into that group and we'll pull it over to here and then we'll get out of that group Remember, you can always uh, your select um, tool and then hit escape and you'll get out of the group that you're in. We'll grab that, use our move tool, head in the direction we want to go and hit control. And now, now it works. So we'll click to there and then we'll say 4x and make our copies. There we go. And then this one is going to be different since our section stops. So we'll grab this one control the direction we want to go and then click on the flange triple click 
push in our blocking and align it with the wall. All right. Now, nothing is getting in there. No critters. Okay. Now, we will put our rim joist on there. And we let's get rid of some of these things first. You can always, oops, these are part of a group. So we can't get rid of these the easy way. We're going to have to go down here to this and say delete all guides. Okay. Sometimes if they're not part of a group, it'll just let you delete those. Okay, so we already have a rim joist down here, a rim board. We're going to grab this one with our move tool. Start heading where we want to go and hit control and it'll make that copy. And then we're going to pop it on to there. And this one's too tall. So we're going to triple click into the group. Use our push pull tool and push this down to the, so that it aligns. And then hit select and get out of the group. Okay, we'll move this one over just a little bit so that everything aligns. You can head in that direction and then hit shift so that you're locked in to that axis. Okay, now everything aligns. And now it's time for our sheathing. Um, I have a little trick right here uh, that uh, Bragg Design Build uploaded, which is the 5 8 roof sheathing from a Zip System. Uh, so we're going to download that into the model. And it's already 4 by 8 and it already has the pattern on it. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees because it runs uh, perpendicular to the framing. All your long 4 by 8 sheets always run perpendicular to whatever framing it's on. So your drywall gets hung horizontally on the stud walls. Your sheathing is run horizontally out here. And then your roof sheathing runs across your roof joists. So we will grab this. And this gets moved to the center of a roof joist because we want, and then we'll slide it out to the edge. Because wherever it ends, like right here, we want to be able to start another board. And we want to give it some place to bear. So there we go. So that's how you do that. And I'm going to do the same thing out here. Move, head in the direction you want to go, hit control to make a copy, pop it on there. Now I'm going to shrink these down to the size of our section. Triple click into the group and push pull. Ah, no, no, no. Ah, I see what it's doing there. I see. So let's see here. Make unique. So it comes in actually as a component and not as uh, just a group. So um, if you, you can edit the component or you can make this one unique, which is what we'll do. And then you can triple click it and push pull. And it will just modify this one. You can escape from that command and come over here. You want to make this one unique too, since we're going to have to cut it off. Triple click into the group. Push pull. Align it with our rim board. And there you go. Now these, just like uh, your wall boards and your drywall, all the joints always get staggered. So we're going to grab this one the full one and we're going to pick the move tool and come to the middle midpoint of group and we're going to pick it and head in the direction we want to go and hit control to make the copy and we'll come up here and pop it at the seam. Now see look at what happens there. It aligns with another joist. Uh, not an accident. Uh, and then we will grab this one and hit control and come over here. And now we have our second row of roof sheathing. So I'm going to make this unique, triple click, triple click, and come on, there we go. It's all lit up now. Now we can push it to a line, and we'll hit select, escape, and triple click. Oh, let's make it unique. Click on it, right click, make it unique. Now triple click, 
push pull pop it in place and then you can escape now all the sheathing's done so now uh, according to the video you watched um, Steve Basic went over his uh, details in the studio and uh, this is what we're drawing so there's an edge condition on these quote-unquote flat roofs uh, that are actually not flat remember um, and they have a two built up two by fours as an edge condition so you have something to nail to um, so we'll start at the corner and head in the direction we want to go and say 3.5 comma 1.5 that's a two by four and we will push it all the way down. And then we will triple click, right click, and make it a group. We will paint it. We'll use the move tool, come and grab the edge, head in the direction you want to go, hit control, and it'll make the copy and then pop it onto the top. There you go. So now you have your edge condition. The thing that comes next is the insulation for this roof. Um, it insulates the top. Well, um, when they built this, they put some insulation underneath as well. But this rigid insulation uh, can come tapered um, so that you have a way to give your roof some slope and get the water off of it. Um, that tapered uh, material is usually a quarter inch per foot. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to measure this. We have seven foot eight. Uh, we will say that is eight feet. It's closer to eight feet. So what we're going to do is use our rectangle tool and we'll grab right here on the corner and we'll all the way over here on the sheathing. We have our rectangle and we're going to pull it up to the edge of this. Okay. Now in order to get the slope on it, we will come out here. And we're just going to move this up so that it's sloped uh, from the middle to the outside. And at a quarter inch per foot, one quarter times eight feet is, what, two inches? One quarter times eight equals two inches. So we'll go, if it'll let us pick it, come on, up, there we go, and heading up blue axis up make, you can hit shift to make sure you're on it see how it slid off you have to make sure you're on the blue axis and then type in two now if you go to the side you can see that it's tapered you triple click right click and make it a group and then we can paint this oh let's go find another color color oh something like this there you go so what happens after this we're not going to do all of the finishing details because that can vary drastically depending on what the look of the building is but the rubber membrane roof goes on top of here and gets folded down over the edge and then there's a drip edge that goes on top of that and then there's a series of trim boards that would be put on here and then your gutter and then underneath here you would have your soffit board that would go from here to here and close all that off so that's all the structure for a flat roof I will come back in the next video and show the um, energy heel truss there you go hope that helps